Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and the Son, Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahushai, Ba'ashim Erekak, Wadash, and double honors to the apostles of the Great Millstone, and as well as giving the salutations towards the Yakim that's furthering this ministry worldwide, and as well as the brothers and the sisters on the side supporting what we do. And it's the brother Laban once again coming at you with another video. And um, in this video, I want to focus on more on the global food crises due to, you know, an issue that's going on in Ukraine. And not as how the media makes it out to be, especially Western media, you know, they're making a big deal about this Ukrainian thing. But, um, yeah, man, um, things are just going to start getting worse from here. And it's looking like probably... In a matter of months this year, we're all going to be in dire situations. And um, if nothing happens this year, then, you know, we can only but prepare for the worst for next year. You know, what's that going to look like? So let's get into it. This is um, the article coming from ZeroHedge.com. So it reads, what will cause hell on earth for global food prices? The world is heading for a catastrophe. A catastrophic global food crisis as a result of the war in Ukraine, which will cause hell on earth for food prices, according to experts. Um, half of the world's population gets food as a result of fertilizers, <coughs> and if that's removed from the field for some crops, the yield will drop by 50%. Spain tore Hazatha, if I'm pronouncing that correct, um, head of agri company Yara International told the BBC known as the breadbasket of Europe Russia and Ukraine export around a quarter of the world's wheat and half of its sunflower products such as seeds and oil for me it's not whether we are moving into a global food crisis it's how large the crisis will be um, said Holzada noting that increasing gas prices will cause a steep rise in the cost of fertilizer David Beasley, the head of the World Food Program, was, if anything, even more pessimistic with his comments just when you think hell on earth can't get any worse. Really, like I said, um, you know, the, the whole situation of Ukraine and Russia is not as big as they're making it out to be. But eventually, we will find ourselves, and I'm not saying we, what I meant to say is, you know, the people that are of this world and as well as the people that are joined the forces they're going to find themselves in a dire situation. And I mean, we're going to be in that environment too, because we, you know, we're in the world. But, um, you know, for the most part, if an actual war breaks out between that area for good, and it's that bad as they're making it out to be, you're going to soon know about it. And, um, you know, they're doing this by purpose. Like, the same goes, you know, the earth is a stage. And we're all playing our part. And as well as your politicians, your, all of your politicians, they're all juiced in together. And, um, you know, they have a cause. And, and, you know, we always talk about it as we do our videos as to what they really want. All of these higher elitists and your politicians, all they, all they really look forward to is this NWO, which is what Klaus Schwab said, the Great Reset. A one world system so they're all they're all into bed together and um you know it's not a thing where it's like oh um putin is putin is um you know overreacting because of what um england's doing excuse me or america's doing to russia and nato and as well as like this is this is this has already been planned way beforehand like all of these things that's going on right now and um the things that you even don't see it's already been planned out a while ago, and everyone's playing their part according to the script. All of these politicians, they're playing the script, man. So let's continue to read on. So it goes, noting that countries like Lebanon, Yemen, Syria, Tunisia are dependent on Ukraine for around 50% of their grains. Beasley noted the stunning turnaround. So you're going from being a breadbasket to now, uh, literally having to hand out bread to them. It's just an incredible reverse of reality, he said. With the number of people facing starvation worldwide, 
having already spiked from 80 million to 276 million before Russia's invasion, thanks largely to COVID lockdowns, that figure is set to increase yet again, and, and it will increase. Oh, it's it's gonna it's very well gonna increase, and um, it's gonna get to the point where if you want to get food, you're gonna have to get an implantable device. This is where this is going. You know, all roads lead to the to the you know the RFID technology, man. This is what the elites are setting up, and as well as the the politicians are in are in bed with the elites set this thing up too. All right. And this is going to be the test for the world. The world is going to be tested, like it reads in the book of um, Revelations, the third chapter. And I can read that as of right now. Um, let me pull up another tab. Yeah, we're going to get Revelations uh, 3. Excuse me. Yeah, this is it right here. Revelations three, verse ten. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all of the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And now I'm, and I'm going to get back to this scripture just in a matter of a moment. Just in a matter of a moment, right? Because there's another point that I want to make on this. So, you know, John the Revelator, as he sees in, in his vision, and this is why he wrote these things down, you know, so that we can read it and understand what he's coming from and, and be aware of these things that he has saw in his vision to come. Because the prophets don't get visions just to get visions. No, they get visions because eventually the Lord is going to bring these things to pass. So, you know, as John the Revelator explains that there will be an hour of temptation and um, you're going to have the elect to be exact, which will be tr tried worldwide. So the world is going to be under a test. You know, as we've heard the saying before, life is just a test. And especially for the elect worldwide, this life is going to test us out to see whether we believe in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh or not. All right. Which, you know, it's already been set up by the spirit that you're going to have the elect. They're going to be passing the, um, the test, the tribulation, the trial. They're gonna they're gonna pass it. It's already set up that they're gonna pass it. Now, what I want to do is I want to get back to what I was reading before, which is actually I wasn't reading anything. I was reading the article and then I went to this scripture here. So what we're gonna do is gonna go get rid of this. And um, like I said, I'll, I'll go back to Revelations the third chapter. The reason why I deleted that tab because I don't want to get myself confused. But anyway, let's read some more on this. Oh, that's it. Okay, cool, cool. All right, so you know what? What we're, what we're going to do is we're going to read another precept. And um, we're going to get the book of Ezekiel, the 12th chapter. Uh, it begins... At verse 16, we're going to read verse 16 in Ezekiel 12, and this reads, But I will leave a few men of them from the sword, from the famine. This is not what I wanted. Salakia. That is not what I wanted. Uh, this is it right here. Ezekiel 12, verse 23. Tell them, therefore, thus saith the Lord power, I will make this proverb to cease and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. Hopefully the mic is all right. <clears throat> and also, but say unto them, the days are at hand 
and the effect of every vision. Like remember as it reads in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2. That at the end it shall speak and not lie. So eventually the prophecies that the prophets of the Lord have been warning about. Including myself. Are going to now start to speak eventually. People are no longer going to say well. I remember people back when I was young or. Or, you know, um, years ago saying that the end will come and the end never came. So why would you say that the end is going to be in all of this nonsense? Well, that's going to cease. Because eventually the end will come. Actually, as a matter of fact, the end is starting to speak. <laughs> the end is start, starting to open up its mouth. All right. And that time is going to come when, when, when all hell that we've been preaching about is going to break loose on this, on this earth. We're not talking about in just one country. We're talking about globally. When we think about an economic um, decline or the crash of the economy, let me use that term instead. You know, we're talking on a global level here where economies will crash. We're talking about a global economic collapse. This is what the prophets have been warning and speaking about. You know, like, yeah, we may speak about America being destroyed and, and, and other places, but mainly in particular America, because that's the Babylon, the great, which will be destroyed according to the scriptures. And as well as it's the um, it's the main place where the Israelites were taken to slaves, serving their captivity. And that's going to be the main place that we will be saved from first and then the rest of us and the other parts of the world will be saved all right but babylon is is like the um the heavenly father's target to destroy it and eventually the lord is going to you know catch up to other places that need that need to be dealt with but overall the world is going to be judged like they've never seen in their life before and that's what we're coming into. So, you know, when people say, oh, well, how do you know the end is going to come? You know, people have been saying that for ages and it's never happened. Well, let's read this again. Tell them, therefore, thus saith the Lord power. I will make this proverb to cease and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say unto them, the days are at hand and the effect of every vision for there shall be. No more any vain vision, nor flattering divination within the house of Israel. For I am the Lord Yahweh. I will speak, and the words that I shall speak shall come to pass. <laughs> and it shall be no more prolonged. For in your days, O rebellious house, will I say the word, and I will perform it, save the Lord power. And a lot of Israelites say this to this very moment as we live in today. You know, if you find a, a simple minded Israelite somewhere, they're going to talk like this. They're going to say, well, people have been speaking about. That's why I'm that's why I'm, I'm bringing this out. Because that's what I was thinking about. But, you know, as as what we see worldwide, if you're paying attention. The end is about to be set up. The end is being set up. If you excuse me, if you're paying attention. The setup for the end is, is at bay. It's, it's <laughs> all right. We might as well kind of, we might as well could, we could very well just say we're in the end right now. And there just needs to be a little bit more um, crises to occur. And um, eventually the, the, the real hell that we've been talking about could, could eventually happen. Okay. And as well as this war too. Which will afterwards cause great famines. Anyway, and, and um, you know, all of this is, is all is all part of the plan of the Heavenly Father. I mean, yeah, you have the elites and the politicians that are, are playing under their own script that they've set up for themselves. But really, the Lord has their script for them. The Lord put, put it in their minds to play out a script so that eventually... His will can be done because this is the Lord's will being done at the end of the day. This ain't the will of Esau at all. Like this is ultimately the will of the Lord. And this is why the Lord gave them the leeway 
to do what it is that they're doing so that eventually again so that his will can be done getting rid of this system and setting up the kingdom all right because let's just say esau wasn't being governed by the heavenly father then why would why would um esau destroy his own kingdom why would he do this for why would he destroy what he already has why is he doing all of these psyops and and all of these different um kind of um tactics to to bring to to set up a one world system like why is he doing all of this because the lord has give, given them an, an, an idea of something to fulfill to make them so excited about so that they can go beyond their way to destroying themselves as it is written the, to the deceived and the deceive are his and um you know who they worship because we know who controls the world we know who's really making things happen out here is is, this, is the masons man the brotherhood have you well they're the ones that's making things happen out here and um you know the high level ones at that you know they're making moves towards their destruction especially when it includes these edomites especially them to be exact the amalekites all right so like i said the lord is playing them man the lord is the lord is leading them towards this snare and um eventually they're going to lose their power for seeking after more power <laughs> all right um so now let's go and read isaiah 55 now in verse 11 so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which i please and it shall prosper in the things whereto i sent it exactly and the lord spoke about famines coming in, in all of the different ages and i just want to read also in the book of ezekiel the fifth chapter now when you read ezekiel the fifth chapter ezekiel the fifth chapter is is, is is um is gonna tie you to what happened in 70 a.d to our people and that's what ezekiel was prophesying he was prophesying that the children of israel would would um suffer the way that they did two thousand years ago like there's a scripture that reads if there be evils in the city and the lord have not done it so that's letting you know right there and that's like a a, a question because the lord does bring evils the lord he is the one that causes evil and as well as he is the one that causes good to happen as it is written as he said the one of his prophets i form peace and i create evil i'm roughly paraphrasing the scripture there and you know what what i'll do is is let me see if i can pull that up Yeah, this is it right here isaiah 45 verse 7 i form the light and create darkness i make peace and create evil i the lord do all these things see so the lord is the one that's bringing in the evils he brought the evils in, in, in into the houses of our people in 70 a.d and as well as he's going to bring the evils in these times to come now let's go back to ezekiel here ezekiel 5 and we're going we're gonna to read, I think it's in verse, maybe, yeah, 16 of this. So it reads, When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, and I will increase the famine upon you, and I will break your staff of bread. And this is the Lord getting at our people, as well as the prophets were vessels of. They were vessels of the Lord, and the Lord spoke through them. So this is what happened to our people um 2000 a little i would say maybe a little under 2000 years ago this is what was going on but i read this to convey the point today that the lord is going to send famines in these times to come especially towards our people and in order for you to survive through the day of the lord you have to be a man of the lord to survive the day of the lord in other words <laughs> you have to have this truth if you don't got this truth you're going to be out there with your ass showing. 
and, and it's not going to be good and this is why in, in the book of job now you know what before i read this i want to also go back to um revelation is the fifth chapter because now I'm, now this is going to lead me to making this point now um revelation is three You're going to go back to Revelations 3 verse 10 it was. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all of the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And now when it concerns the elect, the elect, like I was saying, in order for you to survive the day of the Lord, you have to be a man of the Lord. And what are the men of the Lord going to have? They're going to have the word in their hearts. So once they have that word within their mind, then eventually they're gonna they're gonna oversee or oversee excuse me the, the 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 troubles to come this is how it's going to be done so with the elect the lord is going to show miracles and this is why i always remind brothers especially the brothers that's um you know near and dear to me that i do with at the camp is the fact that when these days come you always you always have to remember that the lord is going to be performing miracles it would it would have to take a miracle to be performed for the elect to survive and i mean that could be another sit down later on lord willing you know maybe tomorrow i don't know but sooner or later anyway from time to time brothers do sit down shows as i'm doing right now or videos not because this ain't a show this is this is this is you know this is not this is not for play <laughs> so this ain't no show all right but um you know when brothers do their sit sit down videos brothers speak about that from time to time and you know the, it, it does need to be brought up the whole idea that miracles will be wrought for the elect to survive the holy hell which is forth to come so yeah um revelations 3 and 10 shows you how the elect will survive okay if they keep hold of the words of the lord which is the bible so now this is why this reads in the book of job 5 another vision which was seen of job let me correct myself not a vision but this is really the lord speaking through job and um this is the lord basically speaking to the elect the prophets those that believe and as well as the sisters as well so now verse 22 i tell you what we do let's begin by reading verse 19 no verse 18 huh. for he maketh sore and bindeth up he woundeth and his hands make up whole he shall deliver thee in six troubles Yea, in seven there shall no evils touch thee. In famine he shall redeem thee from the, from death, and in war from the power of the sword. And thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. And at destruction, this is the kicker, at destruction and famine thou shalt laugh, and neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. So there you go. So this is the miracle that, that the elect are going to experience. You know? In order for the elect to laugh at destruction and famine, man. Like the most I got to be doing something good to you <laughs> in them times, man. So, you know, hey, the Lord is going to take care of us, man. I mean, we don't know how it's going to be done. What time is going to be done? We have no clue. We have no idea. You know, all we can see from our own carnal perspective, we're going to be struggling out here because, you know, there's going to be a famine out here and everything else. And, you know, those carnal thoughts that come into mind, right? Because we're carnal. But we got to think spiritual and always remember that the Lord is going to be the one to cause as it is written. If there be evils in the cities and the Lord have not done it. I form peace and I create evil. The Lord said these words. So we also have to remember these words 
and as well as remember and acknowledge that miracles will be wrought here on this earth with the elect and the elect will see it all right so that's all i have to say with that i want to give all of the praises and the glory to the most high and his son yahweh bahashem yahweh shai bahashem rakah hakodash and with that over and out shalom